In this session, I'll be talking about how you can conduct a measurement system analysis using Minitab. If we open the file, it's example 1501. I'm going to open it. So this is the data from a gauge R&R &R that was conducted. And this, this example is also shown in the book as example 15-01. So the way we conduct a Minitab gauge r and &R study is we go into Quality Tools, move over, then we talk, click on down to a gauge study, and we're going to be doing a cross study. The part numbers are listed in column one. <clears throat> the operators is what we column two. And then we click on Response. So this is the output that we have. We basically have two types of outputs. One of them that's shown in the session, and the other one is shown in this graphic. We'll start with the session. And again, these numbers are similar to what was described in the book, for example, 15.1. Um, so if we go in and notice that we'll see the value, uh, we'll see this ANOVA table. Now, we haven't really talked about ANOVA yet, but um, I'll just give a kind of a brief overview. So the p-value on the right-hand side describes the probability. So if the probability is low, we believe that there is significance. So as it boils down to, for this particular table, we don't see any differences uh, statistically for appraisers and the prey part praiser interaction. If we move on down to the variance components, this represents our best estimate, is that the total gauge R and R, this is repeatability and reproducibility added up, is 33%. That is not very good. That's saying we all have an awful lot of uh, measurement system issues relative to this process. Another way of looking at the output is a gauge evaluation. So the gauge, total gauge R and R is basically uh, a certain percentage uh, study variation is described there. And that's six times the standard deviation. Uh, see for total gauge R and R is 9.57. And the total variation is 16.44. So if we look at that value, saying, boy, that total gauge R&R &R at 58% shown in the far right column is really large relative to the total variation. The other thing that says that this gauge is not very satisfactory is a number of distinct categories. So now what we'd like to do is say, well, what might we do to really better understand that? Now this graphic can give you some insight you know, one of the things that we're doing in the gauge R&R, &R, we're picking a certain number of parts, in this case five, and we want those to be somewhat representative of the spread of our process. If we look at the upper right-hand corner, we notice that part number one, two, five are fairly similar. So we're making statements relative to the variability of our parts. So maybe we don't have a good representation of our parts that we used into it. The lower right, lower left-hand corner talks about the X-bar chart by appraiser. Now, the mathematics associated with that can be found on page 443. But what you'd really like to see is those limits so that the uh, upper and lower control limits tight or small relative to the variability that we have on the individual reading. Quite different than a normal X-bar uh, X bar chart that you might have that would say it's out of control. This is done completely different. So you might want to look in the book if you need more clarification on that. So this gives us some insight to what we might do to improve. Uh, the chapter 15 gets into more gauge R and R study issues and which what one might do.